Yes, well, Amsterdam was one of the first cities in the world that uh, made regulation around Airbnb. And uh, maybe to uh, call it holiday rental because it's not only Airbnb, of course. But uh, already a few years ago, Amsterdam as a city government saw that Airbnb became a bigger platform in their city. And thought, okay, yeah, you can either uh, ban it, authorize it, or make regulation around it. And they decided to come up with a 60-day rule there and say, okay, it's allowed for you as an Amsterdam citizen to rent out your home for 60 days, maximum a year, to keep it fair and to keep it balanced. For example, regarding the, the playing field of hotels and, and uh, bed and breakfasts, and also, of course, uh, for nuisance for neighbors, etc. And then they came up with the 60-day rule. That's one. But on the other end, of course, you also have to see how you can uh, maintain and stick to this regulation. And that is, of course, something that has been a path over the last past few years to, uh, on the one hand, collaborate with Airbnb, for example, and see if they could partly share their data. Uh, but it's also, of course, partly a privacy matter and also uh, as to competitors, a thing. So on the other hand, uh, what the city government of Amsterdam also do, does is, for example, uh, uh, use methods of uh, scraping and just uh, see to it that uh, they have a more close watch on uh, the behavior of Amsterdam citizens and if they are sticking to the regulation. And also, at a certain point, maybe you have to do this, is also put in some uh, uh, fines if people are uh, not sticking to it. And that is, of course, really dropping at this moment uh, the number of uh, misusage of, uh, of Airbnb to keep it fair. Uh, that is one example, and uh, if you allow me to give maybe uh, one or two others, is, uh, let me think, for example, uh, Peerbee, which is uh, a platform where you can uh, exchange goods, is uh, collaborating together with the Expat Center. Of course, when new people come to uh, the city, you don't have everything in place at that moment, maybe, so you can make use of Peerbee. Or another nice example, maybe, is uh, what we call in Dutch thuis afgehaald, which is share your meal. It's a food sharing platform and uh, they have now uh, since I think a year or two a new service in place at uh, Share Your Meal uh, at the platform where uh, senior citizens uh, can also get their food from this platform or through this platform instead of uh, food that might be provided by the city government itself as to a service to people in need. And there you see that there is more and more collaboration between this platform and some city governments in the Netherlands to work together and see if maybe the community can partly take over a service that was a public service. And these are just some examples of what can and could be done with uh, city government and platforms active. And I think in general what you can learn from this is uh, what we sometimes used to call the Amsterdam approach, where you really see public-private partnership. And this is sometimes, of course, exciting because you have, as a city government, a different perspective uh, than, for example, a platform. But there are so many uptakes also, and especially when you look at the Dutch or Amsterdam ecosystem of platforms, most of them are social entrepreneurs, most of them are really uh, willing to collaborate with the city government, uh, partly also share their data to deliver a service together and I think this is a great uh, advantage of, uh, of Amsterdam Sharing City and this take on the sharing economy uh, from Amsterdam. Well, uh, let me start by saying that we were really inspired by Seoul uh, because of course they are already a sharing city since 2012 and uh, Peter and I, both co-founders of uh, ShareNL, thought okay it would be really nice to also bring this uh, to Amsterdam and uh, that is where we started creating a vision, uh, our own vision, which is uh, partly different from the one of, of Seoul, uh, already by the fact that, for example, ShareNL is a social enterprise and not a, a public body. So there is already a different perspective. And we started writing this vision, and of course we wanted to involve the city government on the one hand, but also to involve all the other players in the city, like those startups or platforms, and like, uh, for example, also some traditional companies, like an insurance company, or academics, and also, for example, the local public library. We believe that all those different players make and create the city, and, and this does also the sharing city. So uh, we were really happy that after writing this vision, uh, the city government of Amsterdam and the CTO office there really saw the potential of the sharing economy and started writing its own vision. Um, and that is indeed maybe partly different from uh, the vision of Seoul, although there are really also similarities. Uh, and I think 
first maybe looking at the similarity is that also Amsterdam uh, partly really wants to focus at the, the social inclusion and the social cohesion there and uh, let it be the sharing economy, let it be uh, something that is a phenomenon accessible for everyone and not only for a certain group that owns houses or owns cars for example. Um, what might be a bit different I think and uh, this is also a bit of assuming is that maybe the trust level can be different in different cities or countries all over the world and that's not only a difference between Amsterdam and Seoul but in general being here for example today in Singapore uh, I was talking uh, with somebody from uh, the Ministry of MCCY and uh, he gave me the perfect example of when he was in, in the Netherlands uh, uh, a few years ago he saw that the fences around the gardens were quite low and here maybe in Singapore the fences used to be quite high it's a simple comparison or maybe a, a, a difference between those two cities but does that say something about our trust level or, or b maybe about more openness in general uh, of the Dutch people that could be and of course this is really general I know but I think the trust levels are different whilst the trust is of course a currency for the sharing economy so it's really needed uh, uh, to uh, let the sharing economy thrive but it's also vice versa also the sharing economy could maybe expand the trust in your city so what starts, what starts where that's an interesting thing I think it might be interesting to also investigate and research this more because I get this question when I travel all over the world to share our stories about our sharing city experiences and really uh, get this question a lot of times so why is it so uh, expanding in Amsterdam and in the Netherlands uh, it might be that the Amsterdam citizens are quite entrepreneurial uh, quite open, quite internationally minded, the same as Singapore as a small country, the Netherlands is also a small country so you need this international perspective but maybe that does sometimes uh, something also to your own culture, could be. Uh, I would think it is really interesting, maybe also with your uh, excellence here in Singapore, to just research this b a bit more and see okay what is needed to have uh, a sharing DNA so to say in place and what could, could we also learn from other cities uh, and, and again by saying do we need trust to have a thriving sharing economy or also do we need a sharing economy to have a thriving trust in place so that is I think also something that uh, further on than only Amsterdam and Seoul is something that we should explore together yeah that's another great question and I think uh, this is uh, also a challenge for the, for the near future uh, one of the first things I'm thinking of is uh, again what happened in the Netherlands in this case uh, in 2014 uh, Achmea which is the biggest insurance company uh, and we are already working with them also for years and they are active in the sharing co economy and uh, they're delivering uh, uh, products for the, sh insure for the sharing economy and what they did is they asked a small organization in Amsterdam called True Price to measure the true price in other words in this case the societal impact of four platforms active in the Netherlands and uh, they have this uh, 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 big uh, algorithm and, 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 and panel etc in place so I don't know the, the exact details uh, of that that should be asked uh, uh, to a true price organization itself but what came out of it is that uh, in 2014 with four platforms, uh, car sharing, food sharing, uh, I think uh, also uh, small gigs and uh, well one more I can't recall right now those four platforms in their measurement had a societal impact of four million euros which is I think about uh, six, six and a half million uh, Singaporean dollars and um, that says something so and, and the biggest thing that came out of it is uh, that people really get more social contacts uh, from the sharing economy so the social cohesion is one thing that is really a societal impact but they somehow measure that into euros or into uh, uh, yeah, capital so to say and that's an interesting one because of course it's social capital that is in place but indeed you want to measure somehow what the impact is and other things that could be much easier maybe is just to, to count how many shared meals are there in your city uh, in a certain uh, uh, moment of time, how many uh, shared rides etc or for example let me think uh, we are also leading a three-year public-private partnership uh, in the Netherlands with 40 organizations uh, to have more shared cars on the road we just set an ambition of we want in 2018 we want 100,000 cars on the road that is something that you can 
live up to and, and count and see if all the leasing companies can be part of it and of course the car sharing platform. So there are different ways. Um, but again, I would also like to address here that maybe more research is needed and I would love it that we could have maybe also more real-time insights in uh, the sharing economy and how it is expanding. Uh, uh, maybe also, and that would be like a big step, I think, but maybe also we could see at a certain moment uh, how certain policies in cities are working out and maybe make that almost real time. And that's a hard thing, I know, but that's also a challenge maybe for some bright students uh, uh, here in Singapore or wherever in the world to, to look into different measures uh, of the sharing economy to get it more uh, insightful also for traditional organizations to deal with. Well, I must admit that this is really a new pilot at the city government. And uh, I am, of course, uh, partly aware of what is happening, but not really day by day. Uh, but we already have like a partnership with the city government in place for years. And I talk to them, uh, I think, uh, once or twice a week. But this is really recent. So I uh, don't have all the information yet because the pilot is so young. But indeed, what Amsterdam said, and that is also something that is happening in Seoul, uh, why not open up some of our public spaces sometimes for uh, social uh, initiatives or social enterprise? Um, I think that is a great way of practicing what you preach. Um, and indeed, it comes with some hurdles, uh, uh, as you mentioned, maybe by, by safety and uh, by uh, easy access, uh, uh, indeed, parking space, all those things. Um, how easy it may sound, but by really piloting this, so saying maybe that you start with maybe even four rooms and with some people in the city government that know about it and, and, and of course you have to uh, see to it that the safety is in place, but know about it and that they can at least give you a parking space or in Amsterdam you don't even need that because you are on your bike. But you know, overtake those hurdles and that is maybe to make it a bit more in a bigger spectrum. I think in general um, it is needed, uh, especially within city governments, that you work with people who see the potential and of course see the risk because also from our perspective, we're also looking at both sides to the story, the opportunities and the challenges. But if you wanna do something, you have to pilot and you have to walk into some problems to overcome them and see if it's working or not. So do this in a controlled and safe manner with a few rooms, uh, with some people in the government that see it and wanna work and collaborate with you on making this happen. Uh, on the other hand, it's also a challenge to uh, not be competing with, of course, the market out there because you cannot do that as a public organization. Uh, but you can also collaborate again, of course, with the market. So uh, one of the uh, Dutch co-working spaces uh, is called Seeds to Meet. And they also have software in place at their own co-working spaces uh, where you have to log into uh, once you are coming uh, in to do a, a co-working day. And you pay with social capital. So you don't pay with money for that seat for that day, but just with your social capital by showing what your expertise is and maybe also what you need as an expertise. And this algorithm and this platform is going to match that at that day that you're there. That platform or that uh, software, which is called the serendipity machine, could maybe also be used by a city government to at least uh, open up and, and, and let the world sh uh, sh uh, see what uh, uh, space is avail available and maybe also take away some of the hurdles that the governments uh, might run into. So it's, uh, yeah, again, maybe an easy way, but start really with uh, a secure and, and safe, but also maybe a bit risky uh, in a way, uh, pilots and, 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 and bump into things and learn from that and grow. And that's, uh, that would always be my advice also for city governments uh, and uh, may maybe uh, sometimes difficult, but uh, yeah, it, it also makes it fun, maybe. Yeah, so the future of work, so to say, is a big theme also for us. Uh, because we see, of course, that this is happening and we see that the field is changing and we see that we're partly going from a sharing economy to, let's say, a platform economy or to platformization, where, where all those services are uh, uh, brought together, all supply and demand, on an online platform. and. Uh, what you, for example, see is that city governments have uh, uh, difficulties sometimes with regulating this and, and, and the same goes, of course, for your social security, etc. Uh, this is also the reason, by the way, that we are uh, organizing uh, this October uh, a two-day conference in Amsterdam together with the University of Amsterdam solely on the topic of uh, let, how we call it reshaping work in the platform economy. 
uh, because we have to address this. There are a lot of challenges and uh, it's of course on the one hand where is the definition because if you take like the more narrow definition of sharing economy then it's maybe only peer-to-peer -peer, and it would exclude all the on-demand services and the gig work but of course this phenomenon is leading to this platformization and therefore to uh, the Deliveroo's and the Foodora's and the Uber Eats and, and all the other uh, services out there and uh, that is doing something of course to our current system also in the Netherlands it's, it's, it's everywhere and the future of work is a big theme um, uh, I think we all should address um, and also in the Netherlands we have a, a good social security system in place and uh, of course you want to protect also your citizens uh, as a government um, but on the other hand it's also listening to uh, the platforms and listening to, to the providers and the users of those platforms so are we in touch with uh, the people who are driving their bikes or their scooters uh, with the food and uh, where do they bump into? What do they like about it? Why do they choose uh, for this job? So for example, if I take an Uber ride here in, in Singapore, preferably an Uber pool so that we're more sharing, I talk to the drivers and, and you know, uh, for most of those guys that I'm speaking to, is they're in insurance, they're in real estate, and they just don't have always a, a, a full-time job or full-time income from it. So they take something extra. It's a legit reason, I think, in my opinion, to do this. But of course, what about all the risks? What about the social security in there? Are they aware of that? So there also comes education. Do they know about this? <coughs> and also what is really important, I think, what is the responsibility of a platform? Does it take its responsibility? whilst it doesn't want to be an employer, which I can imagine on the one hand, but on the, one hand, on the other hand, you want to take responsibility. Also in the Netherlands, also the Dutch government is looking into this to really, and this is also always our role from ShareNL, to get everybody to the table, all these different stakeholders, the, the platforms, the users, uh, the governments, uh, maybe also again some traditional businesses to, to just go and talk about this and see where we bump into and what we have to define differently. Maybe in the end uh, you need a, a, a bit of a change of regulation, but I'm not sure if the regulation should just be changed for these platforms, but maybe the regulation as a whole, coming to labor and social security, needs some alterations here and there. And then that would be applying to, of course, the platforms, but also the traditional working environments. That is something that we all in the world have to explore the coming period. Uh, we will share our experiences from our conference and our thought leadership with whoever wants to and hope that other people will do so uh, from their side um, and really focus on, on, uh, on the future because it, it is a changing future, that's for sure. Also with automation, you know, there is a lot of technology coming in place and that will do a lot to, to the society. We have to talk about this, address this and bring things further together. And don't forget to talk to the people who use it because they're doing it already. The new generation is doing it already. You cannot take that away anymore. So what is driving them and how can we somehow also, of course, especially as a government, protect them and uh, see to it that they have a good future. And that is uh, something that we all have to address.